Hello guys and welcome back to part two of this little video series we're doing on the Bitcoin four year super cycle update. Now picking up right where we left off in part one of the video series, we were showing that once Bitcoin breaches its previous all time high, you generally, well you have had a 700 to 1000% increase in the Bitcoin price in that final six to 12 months on the bull market where price goes exponential. Okay, that's our, that's the um, parabolic blow off top. So we're going to move straight in and start having a look at some of the major currencies around the world as we're reaching all time high levels in those respective currencies. So here we have a list of currencies around the world, the largest ones. Now we commonly make the mistake of only looking at the Bitcoin price in US dollars, which is just about to hit 17,000 as we speak in the US dollars, um, 23,000 for my Australian friends. So we're gonna be taking a look at some of the larger currencies that have already been um, hitting um, all time highs in uh, Bitcoin price. Another indicator showing we're already at all time highs is we, a lot of people get too focused looking at the US dollar. But when you look at a lots of these other currencies around the world, the Bitcoin price is already at all time highs, okay? Russian ruble, one of the largest currencies in the world, all time high. How about, how about the Turkish lira? All time highs, okay? There's hundreds of millions of people in, um, in uh, Turkey, okay? It's it's not it's not just some rabble of a country. Yes, they're suffering from inflation and they have a poor currency, but they're one of the they're in the top twenty for the largest currencies around the world. Same story with the Indian rupee. You can see it's just about touching its all time high, okay? A lot of people aren't looking at all the other currencies around the world that Bitcoin is just exploding in and already at all time highs because that is where the fun of the bull market really begins. Okay guys, so we just had a look at um, the Bitcoin price absolutely booming in those respective currencies, whether it was a Turkish lira, Russian ruble, um, worldwide, okay, Brazilian real, it's the weaker currencies that are adopting Bitcoin faster, okay. We're having a look at, this here shows the um, Bitcoin trading volume price in respective countries. So we've got Argentina here, Bitcoin adoption is at all time high. So that's your Argentinian peso. You've got Brazilian real trending up. You can see Chile peso all time high. Now, when you compare that to countries that have a somewhat um, stronger fiat currency, remember, they're all garbage and they're all backed by nothing. Um, so let's compare that to the euro, okay? So um, the people over there are under the illusion that the money is still worth something um, as they only experience that 5 to 10% inflation rate. So as you can see, the Bitcoin adoption hasn't surged like it has in these smaller countries that are experiencing 20 to 30 percent um, inflation rates so, uh, per month that is guys um, so that's 20 to 30 percent per month so it's very evident every time they go to the grocery store uh, month after month their grocery bill is jumping by 20 to 30 percent so to them, they have to wake up and say, hang on, what is money? Which you can check out my uh, previous video i done for beginners last week. I'll pop that one up on screen. But they have to ask themselves, hang on, why, why is my grocery bill jumping 20 to 30% every month? They ask themselves, what is money? They go down that rabbit hole just a little bit. And as you can see, they, uh, they're finding out that Bitcoin is a far superior form of money than their local fiat currency that is being printed into a Bolivian, um, which will bring us on to um, Bitcoin potentially reaching escape velocity this bull run. This, uh, Firstly, this is the M2 money supply. So this is global uh, money supply that is being printed. No, sorry, it is not global. This is just the Federal Reserve uh, the United States. But as you can see, they're having to print more and more money to keep this Ponzi scheme alive. Um, Hence, which brings us on to the possibility of Bitcoin reaching escape velocity. Um, our rulers at the central banks, our puppet masters, our theft collectors, our slave token issuers <laughs> at the central banks have created more money in, the 20, in 2020 than has ever been created in the previous 300 years combined, okay? Just, just sit down and have a think about that for a minute. More money's been created this year 
than has ever been created. Okay, this is the end of fiat currency, which brings us into Bitcoin potentially uh, reaching escape velocity. This is a chart here by Plan B um, of the German mark as it went through hyperinflation as their fiat currency collapsed back in the 1920s. So that is in the black line. As you can see, um, the currency slowly loses value gradually. And then when it hits a certain point, it's just boom. So that's what Preston calls escape velocity, okay? The stock to flow model is gonna be invalidated and it's gonna be invalidated to the upside that doing what it's doing. You're gonna have this thing that looks like a little rocket that's shooting to the moon. Like what what the heck is happening? Separation velocity that, that pushes it out of that orbit and just basically goes out into space, right? How's that possible? What is that? And it's gonna come like a flipping tsunami. A flipping tsunami. Bullish you as hell, Preston. Yeah, I mean I am. I'm pretty bullish on it. Yes, so they are. Uh, that was Preston Pish from the uh, Investors Podcast. Go and check out his YouTube videos. Covers everything macroeconomic and Bitcoin related. And that little video was put together by Richard James. Links down below, guys. So, um, so not only um, do we have uh, fiat currencies failing on a global scale due to hyperinflation, um, but you also have more indicators pointing to this bull run could be different. You've got the big players getting involved this time. You've got the big banks coming on board Bitcoin, whereas in 2017, like Jamie Dimon, they're all um, calling Bitcoin a fraud and a scam. This time, you literally have banks predicting Bitcoin could hit $300,000 by the end of next year. You've got Jamie Dimon at JP Morgan saying Bitcoin's better than gold um, and it could triple. Um, some more quick headlines I wanted to roll you guys through. Central bank digital currencies are coming and when they introduce them and ban cash, people are going to realize the game. I just wanted to play a couple of quick videos for you guys too from our friends at the World Economic Forum. This is Klaus Schwab. The evolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. Yes, fourth industrial revolution, the fusion of our biological and digital identities. Very strange, the same week that Denmark's trying to enforce compulsory vaccines for all their citizens and uh, giving the police the powers to hunt people down who don't take them. Mm. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually... President of Canada, again, COVID providing the opportunity for the reset for our pre-pandemic uh, plans. But moving on, read into those what you will, guys. So I don't want to use the famous last words, this time could be different, <laughs> because many people have and they've been proven absolutely wrong. But this time really could be different. Consider the scenario that you've got players like Michael Saylor coming in and they're understanding the value proposition and they're probably not going to sell until Bitcoin reaches its fair value, which if it was to reach the global adoption, um, I outlined in an earlier video that that price is somewhere around 5 to $20 million per coin. Now, if you have a lot of these smartest investors and the billionaires coming in understanding the fair price of Bitcoin, they're not going to sell it. What thinks you're going to get an 85% correction or crash? Okay, the education, um, the education around um, in the economic landscape about Bitcoin, this bull run is very different to 2017. Okay, in 2017 you had the news articles calling it a bubble, calling it a scam, calling it a fraud. I think from memory, um, the mainstream media has announced. Bitcoin to be dead, uh, what is it, 385 times, and that is completely natural, and it actually brings us into discussing another potential, um, another potential scenario that we've got to think about with the Bitcoin price that could lead to one of these very common 30 or 40 percent pullbacks that we get in a bull market. Okay. And that's a little bit of FUD, a bit of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Because we've got to understand what Bitcoin is actually doing, okay? Theoretically, not theoretically, practically, 
Bitcoin is taking the power out of the hands of governments, okay? We've never, in, in thousands of years of monetary history, we've never had a form of money that removes the power of governments and takes the, um, the money out of the government's hand, okay? Um, the government funds all the wars that it goes through um, just by um, having the ability to artificially increase the money supply and print money. And the, the everyday person who holds that fiat currency pays the price of that war or whatever spending the government wants to do, whether it's building tanks or funding wars in the Middle East. The everyday person pays for those wars, okay, for inflation. That's the devaluation of the currency. So you've got to think, some governments may not react very kindly to them losing that very important privilege that they have by controlling the money supply and being able to literally siphon the wealth of every single person who uses that currency. They could now, Bitcoin cannot be banned, um, but you could see governments or certain countries around the world say, look, we're going to ban all exchanges. They could they could have a 6102 um, style event uh, similar to that of what happened in the United States back in 1933, where they demanded all citizens, um, they made it illegal to own gold. Okay, They said, look, $10,000 fine and you go to jail if you're caught. Um, holding gold. Come turn it into the governments. You're not allowed to hold the real money. You have to hold the paper fiat that we're just going to print into oblivion and fund World War II. We could see it, something, we could see a government attempt to kill Bitcoin by doing a 6102 on Bitcoin, saying, look, it's illegal, rah, rah, rah. Now, we know that, um, that governments cannot stop Bitcoin. It's a distributed um, computer network and governments cannot get in the middle of a transaction. It's censorable, it's immutable, all those beautiful things we like about Bitcoin. But doesn't mean a government couldn't um, couldn't try to just you know make the announcement. Oh, we're closing exchanges, ra di da di da. And this could scare a lot of um, uneducated people, and it could certainly um, lead to one of these big crashes or corrections in the Bitcoin price. Which brings us to analysing uh, what we could be seeing in the short run. Regular viewers of the channel know that in that 2017 bull market where the price of Bitcoin ran from $200 to 20000 we had six pullbacks along the way, all bigger than 30% each time. Whether it was this one here where China tried to ban Bitcoin and it crashed from 4000 to 2000 Okay, there's lots of corrections along the way because if, if markets just went up in a straight line, it would be far too easy for the everyday person to get rich. So it's just something you need to be on the lookout for in this coming bull market. Yes, we've got some crazy price predictions, but it's not going to just go to a million dollars or 200,000 in a straight line. It's far more likely that you get a little bit of you know, up and down, you get lots of those 30% pullbacks along the way. That's how markets move, okay? If everything moved in a straight line, everyone would be rich. But trying to time these 30 to 40% corrections along the way is nearly impossible, okay? When the fundamentals are very strong for an asset class, um, and in Bitcoin's case, it all comes down to supply and demand, you can literally throw your technical analysis out the window. And if you try to time that, you know, maybe Bitcoin is trading at 19,000, so you don't do it, so you wait for it to come back. And then maybe it never comes back and it goes to 100,000, and then you lose 5x your money, and, the, and your money gets inflated away to nothing because you were trying to be cute. And so it's a, sh a share. They're all wrong. You should have never sold it ever, ever, ever. Now, what happens to all these wonderful models if 10 billionaires just decide to buy $1 billion of Bitcoin each and announce we bought it, we're not ashamed of it, we're going to buy more. Mm -hmm. All your models are destroyed, completely devastated, Bitcoin goes to the moon. 99% of traders lose money and that is because it's impossible to um, determine where the price is going to go in the short term. Anyone who tells you they know for sure is flat out lying and they don't know what they're talking about. 
Um, I constantly get asked, oh, where's the price of Bitcoin going this week? Where's it going in two weeks? Oh, should I buy now and cash out in two months? And I, I, I always I always give people what I think, but it's just an opinion, and especially in the short term. Um, my opinion is essentially worthless. I always preface it by saying, look, in the short run, nobody knows. This is what I'm thinking. But so you've just got to be really careful. If you're trying, if you don't have a Bitcoin position right now, and we vote, we're very early in the Bitcoin bull market. That is not a very good position to be in, guys. All right, you want to be pretty well, fully loaded, ready for this Bitcoin bull run because you don't know if you're going to get another. You don't know if there's going to be another pullback for a long time. And trust me, there's people waiting on the sidelines, waiting to buy Bitcoin because all the way up, twelve thousand, thirteen thousand, fourteen thousand, fifteen thousand. The bears have kept saying, oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a pullback to 10 and a half. Oh, I'm waiting to 11. I'm waiting to 12. And as you can see, guys, we we haven't really had a pullback in a while, okay? Just have a look at that price run. And it's got a lot of bears caught on the wrong side of the market. So you've just got a long story short there, guys. You just want to be you want to be positioned for the bull market right now, okay? It doesn't matter whether you get in um, at twenty thousand or eighteen thousand or twenty two thousand. Don't try and get too pretty with your entry. Doesn't matter which price you get in because if Bitcoin reaches the price targets that we think it will, which is you know five or ten million, it's not going to make any difference whether you got in at ten, eleven, or twelve or twenty, okay? Dollar cost average, you want to be in for the majority of the run. Very simple things to remember. You just buy and hold, okay? Hoddle. You hold on for dear life. Don't bother trying to time any of these 20 or 30% corrections. You're just going to lose money in the process. I do. Uh, I know how harshly we swat down the trading, the shit coining, the everything else. And I'd love, you know, even just my inbox, it's always like, don't be a fucking moron. Don't you like I want you to buy this and I don't you want you to think about selling it and certainly not selling it for, you know, paper money. If in the future you want to convert it for a, a service or a good, then, you know, that that's allowable. But I don't want you to think about selling it for five to ten years. I want you to secure it as if your life depended on it. And I don't want you to ever think about trading it or, it, you know, buy, you know, going in the shit coin casino. And the language is my friend, that's how we all talk Eric, to our friends now. Eric, it's like picking up pennies on the railroad track. Exactly. It's like, yeah, you know, you're going to get a few quarters and you're going to get hit by a train too. It's, or, uh, yeah, anybody that says they're going to trade it, the conclusion you come to is they just don't understand it. They, they don't, they literally don't understand what they're doing and they don't understand what it is. As soon as you understand what it is, you're just going to sweep all your excess monetary energy, your, you know, your savings account into this and ho hodl forever. So that is probably a good note to round out today's video on, guys. Here we got the Bitcoin price and I've just got that blue line. Um, that's the 20 week moving average. As you can see, it is very overextended from that 20 week moving average. Um, and it's very common to see those 20 to 30 percent pullbacks in a bull market to shake out those weak hands. Any dip, like we said, you buy that dip. You hodl and you buy that dip very early in this bull run, guys, as we've showed in today's video. Um, but that'll probably do us for today. Oh, I hate to do it, but hit the like and the subscribe buttons. We have to play the YouTube um, little algorithm matrix they've got going on. Uh, just to get the video in the eyes of more and more people because we need to wake them up, okay? We need to get them off that Titanic, that sinking ship that is fiat currency, okay? Get them into real money, whether that's gold or Bitcoin. But this is going to be a very, very big financial event in the year of 2020, guys. We need to wake them up and get them out of the hands of um, Klaus Schwab and his evil buddies over the over at the World Economic Forum and they're coming or well coin or fed coin or whatever you want to call it but they're locked into that system with no alternatives when they ban cash okay um, but that'll probably do us for today see you in the next video guys